Discord is a popular communication platform that was initially released in 2015. It started off as a simple messaging app, but has since evolved into a full-fledged communication platform that's used from people by all walks of life. But how did Discord come to be? What was its journey like? Let's take a closer look. The origins of Discord can be traced back to 2009, when a small team of gamers started working on a mobile app called OpenFaint. OpenFaint was a messaging app that was designed specifically for gamers and allowed them to easily communicate with each other while playing the game by the same developers called Aurora Faint. The first iteration of the program launched in early 2009, made by Jason Citron, who would later go on to be the founder of Discord. Only a few months later, the platform would become free for other developers to integrate into their own games, and in 2010, it got its own standalone version of the app. It was actually fairly popular back then, with over 900 apps in the iOS App Store using it as their chat service for their games, and it even had over 10 million registered users. Jason himself got out at the right time, as he sold the app for just over $100 million to the company Gree Inc., which is a Japanese internet company. This turned out to be a pretty bad move for Gree, as OpenFaint found itself in the middle of a class action lawsuit over fraud, breach of privacy, and other charges because it was accessing and selling data from customers without authorization. Less than a year later, the app would get discontinued, but Jason would come out on top with a smooth 100 million to invest into further endeavors. His next project would be founding Hammer and Chisel, which was a game development studio which would happen in 2012. They had no products at first and took two years to develop their first game called Fates Forever. Jason was speculating that the MOBA genre, including League of Legends and Dota, would get popular on mobile platforms at this time and put a lot of money into the game. Unfortunately, it would not see much commercial success as it was a bit early to the party. On the flip side though, during the development of the game, he had realized how hard it was to organize friends and communities together with the current voice over IP programs like TeamSpeak or Ventrilo, which caused Hammer and Chisel to switch focus onto that. They axed Fates Forever in late 2015, and just before that, they released the first public version of Discord in May of 2015. Now, I remember what life was like before Discord. I'm sure if you were born in the late 80s or early 90s, you remember these times as well. I've used IRC, TeamSpeak, Skype, and many other ways to communicate with friends just to chat or play games together. Needless to say, it wasn't great. But in May of 2015, Discord changed all of that. I was a pretty early adopter of Discord and got a lot of my friends to switch over to a private server where only we had access, and even early on, it was a pretty convenient platform to use. Many of the core features in 2022 that we have now were missing, but it was most definitely a step up from the days of laggy Skype calls and being forced to pay to host a server on other services. The origin of the name is somewhat comical, and Jason himself gave the reason that it just sounded cool and the word Discord itself has to do with communication. Not only that, but the domain was available and it was most definitely an easy name to remember for a company. Now, it may surprise you to hear, but Jason stated that there was no real target audience for Discord outside his goal of wanting to solve the communication problem for gamers. However, it quickly became clear that this would become the largest chunk of its user base as many subreddits and other communities would start replacing their IRC and TeamSpeak links with Discord servers because the platform was so much easier to use. One of the earliest communities to adopt Discord was the Final Fantasy XIV subreddit, as a poster there had shared a link to a server they created to talk about the game. I think one of the first things Discord did to get popular that was an extremely smart move was to be one of the earlier adopters of influencer marketing by forming good relationships with Twitch streamers and YouTubers to convert their audiences to Discord users. Remember, this is 2015, and YouTube sponsorships started only a few short years before that. It was mostly larger YouTube partners that were starting to ramp up sponsorship deals, and it was not as common as it is now where a channel with 50,000 subscribers can get sponsored by all types of companies wanting to reach a different audience. Anyways, let's get into some of the early features from 2015 and take a closer look at how the program evolved over time. Sadly, it's pretty difficult to find detailed patch notes about the extremely early versions of Discord, but using web archives and some handy websites that log information about early features, we can piece together a pretty good picture. One key feature that I briefly spoke about earlier was the fact that you could easily create servers with private text or voice channels. This was a feature of other platforms, however Discord's implementation was much easier to use and had more control over each channel. You were able to gate these channels by creating roles for specific people in your server so they could easily be identified, such as moderators, admins, or support staff. We were even blessed with a mobile version of the app at the same time as the desktop release, although it was severely limited from the jump, but did get better over time. 
You could also mark specific channels as not safe for work, so a user entering for the first time had a warning before accessing it in case there were some not so savory posts within. Early on, you could actually not edit messages after sending them, but this would quickly be fixed in 2015 shortly after the program launched. It just goes to show how far this product has come from its humble beginnings. Another very important but often overlooked aspect of Discord was their privacy features. If you used Skype or other programs back then, it was painfully easy to grab someone's IP address and use it for nefarious purposes, but those days were gone with the launch of Discord. Looking back through web archives, there were a few other pitches that Discord made to get people to switch over to their service, and they even made a nice little chart showing the feature list compared to the competitors. Their original slogan was, it's time to ditch Skype and TeamSpeak, Discord is here, which is a pretty bold statement. One of the main selling points was that Discord was to remain free to use, and luckily seven years later that promise was still kept, although some features are gated behind their paid service. I think one of the main things though was that it was one of the first apps that didn't completely lag out your computer while gaming, which was a big deal. If you used Skype back in the day, you will know that Skype was probably one of the shittiest programs to run while you were multitasking. Another great thing about the early days was that Discord had its own YouTube channel from the start, which is a lot more common now, but it allowed the company to more easily communicate with its user base and provide updates in a video format. They would post tutorials for users just starting out, blog posts, and new features that were either being launched or coming in the future. 2015 was a great year for the program, but it was nothing in comparison to what was about to happen in the coming years. In the early days of the Discord webpage, they had a section about the future plans, and you can see how far ahead they were thinking when creating this product. In 2016, the company would get a $20 million investment from multiple companies, including Time Warner, and it was clear that people saw the value in this program because it was growing so rapidly. During 2016, the program grew at an insane rate with 25 million registered users, and even though their revenue was a measly 5 million so far, it was very clear that this product was going to become a powerhouse on the level of Reddit or Twitter. I think one of the reasons for this, outside all the features Discord was boasting about, was the fact that on their front page they had a little button that said try now with the caption no download required. This was because they had a browser version that was fully capable and didn't require you to actually do anything other than to create your account. We'd also see some gaming related upgrades as they released their GameBridge API in 2016, which allowed developers to directly integrate Discord into their games with a public API available on GitHub. Now, remember at this time, there were no premium features that you needed to pay for, but that was about to change as the company needed a way to raise revenue and 2016 would mark the year that Nitro would launch. It was a paid subscription that cost $4.99, which would add bonus perks to your experience rather than locking current features behind a paywall, which was integral to its success. You got increased file size sharing, the ability to use custom emojis across every server, as well as being able to upload animated avatars. All of these features were most certainly not required to have a good experience with the program, and to this day, this is still the case. One of the most anticipated features though was the Discord overlay, which is an update teased on their website back in 2015. It allowed a quick and dirty look of your Discord client superimposed over the game you were playing so you didn't have to tab out, which is a very nice upgrade. Some other pretty basic things were added during this era, like the ability to right click on interface items, which brought up a context menu, much like you see on Windows and Mac desktops for quick access to different commands and features, like banning a user or quickly adding a role to a member. A quick list of some of these basic features being added in 2016 would be direct message calls with friends, as well as multi-person video calls, two-factor authentication, custom emotes, message reactions, and status updates being displayed on your profile. However, even though 2016 was a big year, 2017 and 2018 would be the years that Discord absolutely exploded in popularity. In 2017, we'd see the user base double to just shy of 50 million registered users with over 9 million annual active users on the platform. This would also be the first year in which Discord would reach a staggering evaluation of over a billion dollars. Things were getting serious, and Discord was taking over the online communication market with an absolute frenzy of people flocking to use it. Now, something that I found to be quite interesting was the fact that bots were available to use from the start in 2015, however before 2017 it was an unofficial API. That would change in 2017 though, when Discord announced to bot developers that they would be getting some big upgrades to their bots. Nowadays, the bots you can find on Discord are server-defining pieces of software that can do everything from auto-moderation to music sharing. We'd also get video sharing and screen sharing capabilities in private calls amongst friends. 
These are all things that are absolutely necessary in today's world, especially with the new watch party feature we got in 2022. Another nice but definitely niche feature would be the ability to get your server verified if it was a community-based server built around a game, community, or otherwise not a personal server. But in 2018, Discord would have another absolutely bonkers year, more than doubling its user base to 130 million and increasing its company evaluation to a smooth 2 billion. Compared to the previous year's $20 million of investments, that would be multiplied by over seven times with a staggering $150 million in investments into the platform from various companies. During this time, we'd seen an equally impressive amount of changes and updates to previous years, like the Xbox Live integration, so players on Xbox could chat with their friends through Discord. We'd also see some nice quality of life updates, like a spell checker being integrated into Discord's text channels, as well as being able to mention specific users with the at symbol. Another notable feature from 2018 would be the new game store within Discord, which functions similarly to Steam and is a hub that developers can place their games on for users to purchase. Sadly, the days of $5 Nitro would be a thing of the past, as the price would be bumped up to $10 and you could buy a lesser version called Nitro Classic, which still contained most of the features you liked about the original version of Nitro. In 2019, Discord would see yet another year of absolutely explosive growth, doubling their user base to 250 million registered users and receiving a company evaluation of 3.5 billion. We'd see a bunch of awesome features come in, like the ability to live stream to your friends inside voice channels for free, up to 720p 30fps. We'd also get a couple expansions to Nitro, with the ability to use a function called server boosting, which was a super nice quality of life update for the users who weren't paying for Nitro, as it gave every member in the server extra perks inside the server that was boosted. Another nice quality of life update was the ability to create folders for your servers, as by this point, some people had joined way too many servers to keep track of, and more and more communities were migrating to Discord. By now, Discord had outgrown just the gaming community, and in 2020, we'd see them change their motto from chat for gamers to chat for community and friends. It was becoming more common for non-gaming related servers to pop up because it was such a convenient way to bring together many different types of communities. The mobile version would also see some love with the new ability to screen share on your phone or tablet with friends. On the flip side, we were now able to share video with in-server voice channels so that groups of people could now have video calls with their webcams outside of private chats. 2020 would come with another massive bump in users reaching 300 million, which was both good and bad for the company. The 2020 COVID pandemic put a ton of strain on Discord servers as more people were locked in their homes and flocked to Discord to communicate with friends and family. This was quickly remedied though, and the servers were expanded to accommodate this new demand. On the server side though, we get the new crisp noise suppression system integrated into voice channels, which is an absolute godsend, because if anyone watching has that one friend that sounds like they live on an airport runway, the background noise problem was a thing of the past. And now we reach 2021 and 2022 with the modern day Discord we know and love. Some of the biggest updates yet would come to the platform like integrated slash commands for bots, as well as the ability to create custom server profiles for each different server you joined. We'd see internal integration of auto mods so you could keep your server squeaky clean if you'd like, as well as some global options for server owners like muting an entire server with the shh button. One feature that came along that I personally use in the Squash Discord is the new forum channel, which is the first time we were able to change the layout of a text channel. Join my Discord, please. Instead of it being one big text channel everyone can type in, people can now create posts of their own that are separated into a list that can either be public or private. But I think that the biggest update of all that came was the new app directory. Prior to this point, third-party websites were created to aggregate different apps and bots that you could add to your server, but this was a thing of the past, as we now have that list directly integrated into the Discord client with the app directory, which only came out a couple months ago. This is an absolutely necessary addition, as when you add an app from here to your server, you know it's been vetted by Discord itself and won't have any malicious intent. Lastly, I'd like to mention the addition of the activities section, which was added to voice channels. These consist of different types of small mini games you can play with each other inside a voice channel, but more importantly, an official way to have a watch party on YouTube with your friends. Perfect for something like watching a live stream together or a movie. In the present day, Discord is used all over the world by all different types of people, myself included. I know this video was a bit different from my previous as it was not related to music content, but I enjoy reading about a bunch of different topics and I hope you enjoyed learning with me. If you'd like to see other topics covered or other types of content on my channel, please let me know in the comments. Thank you guys for watching, stay safe out there, and I'll see you in the next video.